Hello, Hope Sabara here. Today is just one really quick move, and I call it sinking runner's lunge. The focus is the psoas and the hip flexors, which for many of us is an uphill battle. If you're a runner or a biker, these are often fairly tight, but also if you spend a lot of time sitting and maybe are just going from being somewhat immobile to now trying to create more mobility in your life. Um, we're gonna be using blocks. Now, oftentimes people's first experience with props are like one of two things, either props or ooh, props. And so this move is best practiced with blocks. So even if you can touch the floor, I really want to encourage you to use the blocks because that's what creates a more of a focus on the hip flexors, on the psoas. Also, there's a core component. So we're trying to keep that pelvic core nice and stiff and strong so that we can focus more on the hip flexor rather than being slack in the lower back. Let's begin. I'm going to take my blocks, set one on each side of the mat, and turn to the length of the mat. Stepping forward, I'm going to step forward with my right foot. So right foot steps forward. And it's important, just a few little baseline things, that the front foot is flat on the floor. Typically, I see all different things of people with the heel way up off the mat or the knee lunging way forward. I want you to have a good basis of stability so the foot is nice and flat and the knee is over the ankle. It's like a starting line for a race where the wrist, the ankle, and the other wrist are all in line with each other. Once I roll the back toes under, I'm going to lift my back knee up off the mat. So right now, just a few small tweaks. It's really easy to hang out and wait on the thigh. I want you to keep that inner transversus muscle nice and strong so the spine has lots of really great length. Remember, we're not here. Use your hand for help to get that leg forward if necessary. My back heel is going to push, and even when I just do that right now, I feel some length in my calf. So it's also about the leg. Arms press to help regulate how much work I'm going to have in that left hip flexor. So we're sinking down on the exhale and pressing through my back heel, belly is supported. The more upright I come, the more intensity I'm going to have on that hip flexor. Don't force, okay? Really allow the body to work as you need to. Inhale, coming back up. Exhale, front knee lunges, back heel pulls, spine comes upright. I'm using my arms as though a hammock was tied to a tree, and my arms are the trees. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, as I sink my hip down, I'm noticing where my hip is spinning to. So you tend to sink to the more open point. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, sink, this is round four. And inhale, up. Exhale, five. And inhale, up. We're not in a race. Exhale, six, I want you to complete the breath. And inhale, up. Exhale, seven. And inhale up, exhale eight, keep that transversus strong, lean a little bit back, almost like you were to take a rubber band over the edge of a counter. Exhale nine, you might notice yourself getting a little tired. And inhale up, last one, exhale 10. And inhale up, nice job. Let's step up into standing forward bend. Gentle bend in the knees to allow the hips to regain some length here and openness drop the head down slow. We're just noticing what's available to notice in the body. We're not pulling or jerking, we're not forcing. Just pay attention, take that moment for yourself. As you inhale, feel space come into the sacrum. As you exhale, head curls down. Let's try the opposite side. So now I'm gonna step back with my right foot and I'm in that runner's lunge. For those of us that might be a little bit stiffer, feel free to double up on blocks, okay? So there's always a way. Chairs, maybe you're even stiffer than that, which is awesome. You're starting exercise, you're starting movement. Maybe you need to be up on chairs and work in the movement. Definitely always an option, always a way. Keeping the back leg strong, and the more restricted my quadricep and my hip flexors are, the more the back knee is gonna almost be bent, and you're like, why can't I straighten it out? Take it slow, one thing at a time. Here we go. Exhale down, press through the back heel, extend up through the crown of the head, and then inhale, come back up. Front foot is not gripping, it's flat on the floor. Exhale, belly is strong, hip flexor is sinking. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, and inhale. 
Keep breathing. Exhale. And inhale. This is five. Exhale. And inhale, five more. And notice when you sink the hip, if I try to turn the outside of my right hip more forward, I'm going to feel more on the outside of my hip versus in the very inner part of the groin. So you can personalize it. Exhale, breathe. And inhale. Exhale, arms are strong. Try to keep the folds of the elbows forward to keep the chest open. And up. Exhale, down. And inhale, up. Exhale down, and inhale up, step forward. Give the knees up for a couple of bends here, and just take note of what side tends to be your more restricted side. We're going to go back and do that hip an additional few rounds, so incorporating two to one ratio. I'm going to step back with my left leg, and here we go. Exhale down, a little bit easier this time, and inhale up. Exhale down, and inhale up, keep breathing, exhale, now you kind of have body awareness as to what we're feeling, inhale, definitely some body heat, I'm increasing blood flow to my lower pelvic region, organs and also lower legs, exhale down, and inhale up, exhale down, and inhale up, four more. Exhale, four, pay attention to how you're pressing through the heel. Are you spinning on the foot one way or the other when you're lifting and lowering? Exhale down, and inhale up. Keep the front leg nice and steady. Exhale down, and inhale up, two more, you're doing awesome. Exhale down, take it slow if you need to, pause me, and then rejoin when you're ready to. Last one, exhale down, and inhale up, step forward. Relax the head, nice little bend in the knees, relax the shoulders. And then bending your knees, slowly coming to a seated position, let's lay onto the back. So as I lay onto my back, I'm going to only need one block. Extending my legs, typically the lowest part of the block. Now this is a four inch, you could be using a three inch. Um, you can also be just on the floor flat. The block may be too much for you depending on what your body is used to and where you're at as far as opening the hips. I'm going to bend my knees and lift my hips, placing my hips on top of the block. Now how do I know my hips are in the right spot? Right where your pants are. Typically most of us wear our pants at a low waist, so that's about the top of the sacrum. So the block is on the sacrum, not on the actual vertebrae or the lumbar spine. Really important to note that. This should feel pretty nice, just that pressure of your hips on a flat block. This is a great restorative pose to lay in or a supportive bridge, This, just this in itself. All right, typically the focus is people grabbing their knee into the chest and there's more focus on the knee grabbing than on the leg lengthening. The focus is psoas and hip flexors right now, so we really want to pay attention to that being the focus. I'm just going to adjust myself a little bit here so I'm fully on the mat. Okay. I'll start out by lengthening my left leg. So left leg's going to extend out. Couple points here. One, we want to try to keep our pelvis fairly sta steady and stable. And the focus is reaching your leg out of its hip socket. Okay? So the pelvis is going to stay in place. It's like you're trying to pull the leg out of its socket. Or you would take your fist and put your fist into a baseball glove. The fist pulls out of the glove. The glove doesn't come with. Okay? Knee and toes also stay turned upright. Now, if you're having some discomfort, you may also need to internally rotate the leg slightly in order to get more of a release. So just pay attention to those fine tunements. I'm slowly now going to guide the knee up and either hands on top of the knee and shin or under the hamstring. Hands on the shin does not equal better movement, okay? My arms are long, so my arms just automatically go here. Maybe your arms are short and they need to be here. So just honor your body as you need to. Torso stays stable, it doesn't sink towards the mat. Exhale now, draw the knee towards you. Now, patience is bliss here, and this is what we're trying to cultivate partly in this world today, is patience. So once I draw the knee in, 
I'm only going to draw as far as I feel that first initial sensation. Why is this important? Because this is the top layer that we first have to peel off in order to go to the bottom layer. For many of us, myself included, yoga was great for me because it taught me how to be more patient and it taught me how I have to go through this process in order to make a result long lasting. So just because the knee cranked in is a bigger sensation, your body has to go through those first sensations first, okay? All right, so leg is reaching out of the socket. That's my visualization. Exhale, I'm gonna draw my opposite knee into a point to where I can keep that sensation until it passes. So inhale through the nose, and exhale, breathe. Inhale through the nose, and exhale, breathe. Now take into consideration, we just did some pretty intense hip flexor work, so you could also do this movement just cold um, when you wake up in the morning or after a workout, and you may notice some definite deeper release. So just take that into consideration. Inhale through the nose, relax your shoulders. Exhale, breathe out. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, keep breathing. My exhale is setting the intention to open my hip joint. Inhale. And exhale. I'm going to try to hold this for at least a minute, if not longer. So we're just going to go for a minute, you and I, but you can pause me, hold longer, and then Play me again when you're ready to do the opposite side. Let's take a few more breaths. I'm noticing my bottom leg is working, but I'm trying to stay it's nice and open and spreading in that hip flexor. Now come out of the pose. I'm going to release my bent knee and either extend that leg to just rest and notice. As I inhale and exhale through the nose, noticing the heaviness of the legs, noticing the release of the lower back. As I rest here, typically it's not uncommon for you to want to wiggle and move and get rid of the sensation as fast as possible. I don't want you to do that. I want you to stay with the sensation and however intense or subtle it is, as long as it's not pain. Pain is anything hot shooting or sharp, anything intense, anything expansive. So just really paying attention to that numbness and tingling are going to be another two things. Then you definitely want to get up, move around, release, shake the hip out as you need to opposite side. I can start with my bottom leg bent if I want to, bringing what was once the lengthened leg into the belly again, wrapping hands over the shin or over the hamstring, slowly now sliding the leg out. You may be here with the knee slightly bent, okay? You do not have to have the leg straightened. Your body may not let you straighten the leg and paying attention to that. As I extend my leg out, exhaling, bringing my left knee in. If you're feeling pinching in the hip fold of the leg that was just straightened, roll your thigh muscle out. So I'm actually going to roll my thigh here a little bit and then come in. That hip hip flexor was just lengthened more than it normally is, so you might feel the tissue buckling. So just that little rotation will help. You can also do a strap and roll the thigh with a strap. Inhale through the nose, soft shoulders, we're not hunching. Exhale through the nose. I'm taking my right leg out of the socket. I'm not taking the socket with. Inhale, and exhale, keep breathing, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Let's take about two more breaths, inhale through the nose, and exhale, breathe out. Last breath, inhale, stay calm. And exhale. And slowly release the clasped leg. Let's drop into a bound angle this time. Now at any time you can remove the block. Knees drop open. My back is gonna increase its lordotic curve. Arms reach overhead, soften the shoulders. Let's take a couple good breaths. If you're feeling any strain in the knees, push the heels out further away from your pubis bone. When the heels are closer, you are required to have a deeper stretch through the quad and through the inner adductors. If your body's not ready for that, you're gonna feel it in the knees. So just lengthen out the legs a little bit more. Nice deep inhalation, focus on volume in the side lungs and exhaling, body sinks with gravity.
nice job. To help yourself out of the position, hands come to the outsides of the legs. You just did all this great work. Don't strain those muscles. And legs come back vertical again. We're going to do our more restricted side an additional few times. Now we've been working with two to one ratio in this clip all day today. So just really paying attention to now what typically is my, my tighter side. You may be feeling really imbalanced right now. And just go with what typically is that more restricted side. I'm going to extend my left leg again. Right leg comes in. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. I'm trying to lengthen the leg out of the socket. Not taking the hip down. So if my hands are my pelvis, one hip is not tipped down further than the other. They're very much even and neutral. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, breathe out. Where I grab my leg and pull, if I pull off to the side more, it's going to feel much different than if I pull right on top of my belly. So just take that into consideration as well. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Definitely some patience is cultivated when you work with holds like this. Inhale. And exhale. Notice the intention in the mind. Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling at ease? Are you feeling blissful? Maybe there's a welling of an emotion. Our hips store a lot of junk, a lot of our past life things from childhood and so on that is stored here. And as we start to unlock this, don't fight what comes forward. Let's take a couple more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Last breath, inhale, and exhale. Nice job. I'm going to release my legs slowly. Let my hips pause here. Legs are just going to roll open. And notice the heaviness that that feels. Notice if there's any pain in the back body. Discomfort is okay. Pain is not. And then arms at your side. Let's take a few breaths here. Inhale through the nose. You can close your eyes. Exhale through the nose. All we're doing here is noticing and allowing. From that noticing and allowing, slowly start to move your legs and eventually bring the feet flat to the mat. Gently lift your hips to remove the block and then notice how your hips feel once they drop to the floor. Feels really good. Gentle clasp with the knees into the chest. Just kindly rock on your sacrum. We're not looking to get rid of anything. We're just noticing. At the angle in which I hold my legs would change the sensation on my sacrum. I do the rocking with my arms at extension holding my knees, it's going to feel much different. I'm going to be on more of the flat part of the sacrum rather than the top edge and the lower back. Now roll all the way over to the side. Etiquette for lifting. Top hand is your press, your presser point here. So rather than lifting with the hip flexors of the neck, which we commonly do, I'm going to push myself up like a jack and lift, so virtually pain free. Coming to the center of your mat, bring your hands to the heart. Always a good point to offer gratitude. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, it was enjoyable. For more information, visit my website at hopesavara.com. Check me out on Facebook, Copper Tree Wellness Studio, or Core Functional Fitness by Hope Savara. Hope to see you soon. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours. Namaste.